From Pasadena, California, it's the Rose Parade's New Year's Celebration, presented by Honda. On January 1st, the 135th Rose Parade will kick off down Colorado Boulevard, where you'll see live the spectacular floral masterpieces, larger-than-life majestic floats, spirited marching bands, and high-stepping equestrian units that define this iconic tradition year after year. But first, here's an exclusive inside look at what goes into making the Rose Parade so special. Hello, I'm Alex Agajanian, the president of the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Association. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2024 edition of the Rose Parade's New Year's Celebration presented by Honda. Over the next hour, we're proud to present an in-depth, behind-the-scenes look at the rich tradition and history behind the biggest New Year's Day celebration in America. From floral floats and marching bands, equestrian units and our royal court, grand marshals and more, you'll get an up-close look at how this grand 135-year tradition all comes together. On behalf of the 935 dedicated volunteers and professional staff that help put this parade on every year, I want to wish you and your families a safe and happy holidays. And now, please enjoy the Rose Parade's New Year celebration presented by Honda. It was the winter of 1889, and people back east were buried knee deep in a blanket of ice and snow. But out west, the sun was shining and the roses were blooming. Enter Professor Charles F. Holder, founder of Pasadena's famed Valley Hunt Club. We should have a festival, he said, to let the world know about our paradise. And so, on New Year's Day 1890, the Tournament of Roses was born. That first festival was a wonder to behold, complete with foot races, tugs of war, and of course, those wonderful floats. In 1901, the first automobiles came on the scene and people traveled from far and wide to catch a glimpse of the five motorized vehicles that were relegated to the back of the parade so as not to spook the horses. In 1902, after a decade of parades and the individual games that would follow, the tournament decided to give football a try. That first game ended in a rout, with Michigan beating Stanford by a score of 49 to zero. Just two years later, football would be replaced by chariot races, a sport so dangerous and expensive, it was canceled in 1915, when it was decided to bring football back to Pasadena, and it's remained a New Year's tradition ever since. By the mid-1920s, the parade was being broadcast coast to coast on radio and movie theaters showed newsreel footage of the parade to eager audiences looking for a break from winter's grip. In 1947, KTLA in Los Angeles aired the world's first televised broadcast of the parade. And in 1954, NBC was first to broadcast the Rose Parade in living color all across the nation. Now, for the first time in history, the Tournament of Roses Parade truly became America's New Year's celebration. And of course, that meant bigger floats, bigger bands, and even bigger audiences. And after 135 years, through rain and shine, two world wars, a global pandemic, and a whole lot more, the Rose Parade remains an enduring symbol of the dreams we all share, and above all, a sense of renewal and hope for a happy and healthy new year. we pulled that off and it was so much fun. Hi, I'm Cindy Dice. I'm from Cal Poly Pomona. 
and I'm Madison Tony. I'm from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. So what does it take to design, build, and decorate an award-winning flow? Well, it takes thousands of volunteers. And 200,000 fresh flowers. And it takes an entire year of late nights and weekends. Sound crazy? Trust us, you have no idea. Come check it out. Flow is the only float built entirely by students. It's completed between two different campuses over 200 miles apart. Once tournament announces the theme of the parade, we hold a concept contest. We get almost 200 designs. We choose our top design and we flesh it out until we have some rough sketch of what the float could look like. <laughs> Once you get into March, you're actually starting that design process. You start building your animations from the ground up. We start adding the shell and the shape of the float. Once the two halves have spent all summer constructing, San Luis Obispo takes their piece, loads it on a truck, and takes about four hours to drive all the way down to Pomona. Then once it arrives in Pomona, the big moment comes where San Luis Obispo's half and Pomona's half come together. It's a very nerve wracking process because we don't know if either of them are gonna fit. Deco week is when we put all the decorations onto the float. A couple weeks prior to Deco week, we put out an announcement saying we're looking for volunteers. It can range from like a Girl Scout troop to dedicated volunteers that come out every single year. It feels like the whole community is coming to help us out. <laughs> A float is a lot of work and a lot of fun and speaking of fun up next a behind the scenes look of all the hard work and fun that goes into decorating a rose parade float over the years creating a rose parade float takes a year's worth of expert planning great attention to detail and thousands of hours of hard work resulting in masterpieces right after the parade we go immediately into construction and what makes this parade so unique is the one rule all float designers must follow. We must decorate our floats in natural materials that have not been altered or dyed. For example, if you take corn, you cannot heat it to make it popcorn. You can crush it, you can grind it, but you can't alter it from its natural state. Everybody thinks it's all flowers, but we use seeds. Anything that you can imagine out in nature, we've used. Mushrooms. Pine cones. Oranges. Beans. Rice. Wheat. I mean, really, I'll take anything from anybody. We've had coffee, we've had teas. Dehydrated limes and lemons. Seaweed. Bark. Spice. Eggplant. Lentil. Protea. Mums. And definitely roses. The biggest challenge for a self-built flow is the weather. While most Rose Parade floats are professionally built inside, there's a handful of self-built floats which are solely designed, constructed, and decorated by their community organizations anywhere they can find the space. We are entirely outdoors, decorated under the 210 freeway. Good morning, welcome. Some of the unsung heroes are the long-standing pedal pushers and their devoted decorating volunteers. Since every inch of the float needs to be covered, materials are ordered as early as February. Materials are coming in literally from all over the world. When possible, we always buy from California. Thanks in part to the California Cut Flower Commission, who supply the parade with those homegrown Golden State beauties. Meanwhile, the floats are being prepped for decoration. Foam, chicken wire, screen, all of these processes that are used to build a float are used to accommodate the floral aspect. By mid-autumn, the dry goods start coming in. We apply dry materials first because it will last. Each decorating material is assigned a color on the float, and it starts with seeds and powders. We can shred it, we can blend it, we can squeeze it. 
With only one week left, it's time to add the fresh materials. Most of the flowers that go on after December 29th are fragile and need to be hydrated. We use on an average 25,000 roses per deck. So the amount of flowers we use is probably in the millions. An estimated 18 million flowers, 5,000 gallons of glue, 600 tons of steel, and hundreds of volunteers are used to pull off this brilliant spectacle. Volunteers are the only way that this float can happen. Uh, they come tirelessly day, night, and they really put the whole thing together. Thanks to everyone behind the scenes, America's New Year's Day celebration continues to amaze millions. If you have decorating on your bucket list, call me. I've got a spot for you. I will put you to work. There's no better way to celebrate our New Year. Every float tells a story, and the UPS store embodies the spirit of each Rose Parade theme with a Grand Slam float inspired by children's literacy. The whole idea was that through reading, children can have inspiration and become something that was possible. The UPS store's commitment to promoting literacy creates all kinds of fantasy worlds that make fantastic subject matter for floats. Their first float featured a 42 foot tall giraffe. We worked with a flower grower specifically to grow 20,000 orange marigolds just to be the spots on the giraffe. In 2018, we decided to up the ante with a gigantic sea serpent. Her tail moved, her body swayed, the smoke came out of her nostrils, bubbles came out of the ocean. It deservedly won the extraordinary trophy. One of the tricks with decorating all of the ostrich were these wonderful black tea leaves that look exactly like feathers and they mimicked the plumage of an ostrich. The 2020 float featured golden lion tamarinds. The quantity of tropical flowers on that float felt like we had traveled to the Amazon. Their 2022 entry, Rise, Shine, Read, celebrated the positive impact literacy can have on a child's ability to succeed. This state-of-the-art 35-foot tall and 55-foot long float, the tallest in the parade, featured a colorful, spectacled rooster reading to his family of chicks. From whimsical designs to storybook fantasies, the UPS store's creative efforts have definitely paid off. Most recently, with three consecutive wins of the prestigious Sweepstakes Award. The UPS store always delivers. America's New Year's celebration continues with more electrifying floats, a one-of-a-kind marching band, unbelievable equestrian teams, and more. For over six decades, Honda's partnership with the Tournament of Roses have helped ring in the new year, consistently showcasing hope, a renewed commitment to help people achieve their dreams, and a focus on philanthropic partnerships in the community. The Bigger Than Life, Our Hope for the Future float featured a colorful display of 30,000 flowers and six animated children following their dreams. Riding the float was the 2020 Honda Campus All-Star Challenge Championship team from Spelman College and Collegiate Women's Sports Awards Honda Cup winner, Rachel Garcia. Honda returned to the Rose Parade celebrating their 60th anniversary with a 25-foot tall giant birthday cake featuring 60 marching band members from historically black colleges and universities who stood as candles, showing Honda's long-standing support of HBCUs. And Honda thanked four of their philanthropy partners who they teamed up with on nationwide initiatives for young people, as well as their top employee community volunteers with a ride on the massive 21 feet high, 110 feet long, three car train, Power of Dreams Express. Since 2011, a specially configured hybrid engine powers each of these dynamic floats, demonstrating Honda's commitment to addressing climate change. Alternative fuel vehicles are often the first to lead the parade through its five-mile journey. 
Honda's 2023 Parade Leading Float Forever Determined showcase their goal for an all-electric future, represented by their first all-electric SUV, electrified race machine, electric motorcycle, and their vertical takeoff and landing aircraft of the future. A spirit of creativity, dedication to the community, and a commitment to help people achieve their dreams is all part of the Honda tradition. The Tournament of Roses is proud to partner with Honda to bring entertainment and tradition to people around the world. For more than 70 years, FTD's affiliation with this great American pageant has showcased the art of floral decor at its best. Today, FTD recognizes every float in the parade for its beauty and originality, a century-old passion rooted in the art of flower giving worldwide. Each year, three float judges are selected by the Tournament of Roses president. It was such an honor to be chosen as a Rose Parade judge because I had grown up watching the parade. But float judging is no easy task. 24 awards need to be given out to roughly 40 floats in just two days. You spend the entire day going from float to float to float. Each judge is given a binder that has all the information for each float. There is a massive scorecard and an incredibly elaborate system for judging. We're allowed five minutes a float on day one. You have to score very quickly on like 30 or 40 categories. The next day, you do it all over again. We're allowed three minutes a float on day two. Now the float has to perform for you because you're judging the final float. On the night of New Year's Eve, the three judges assign the awards. The categories range wildly, such as best community-built float, most humorous, the best use of roses, of course, there's the sweepstakes. Finally, right before the parade, the FTD Float Awards are announced. And while FTD brings the Float Awards to light, it's the VIPs in their beautifully adorned classic vehicles that remind us of this great tradition. With Jane Goodall, I created these topiaries of moss that were chimpanzees. Gary Sinise, I brought in the yellow ribbon that was placed on the car itself for the troops. In the end, it takes the team roughly 10 hours and 10,000 stems to decorate each vehicle. The Rose Parade's success lies in the beauty, imagination, and skill that partnerships like FTD bring to this very special day. Trader Joe's hand selects tour members every single year to ride on the float because of their hard work, how they wow our customers every day, and for treating each other with just courtesy and respect. I was able to participate in the All Aboard Float, which represented our 50th anniversary. I turned 50, and I was chosen to ride on the float, the 50th anniversary. Riding on the float with my dance was the coolest thing I ever done. One of our floats was called It Takes a Flight of Fancy, which featured our fearless flyer, flying above the crowds in a pickle barrel, which is very much like Trader Joe's. We like to have fun. And that day, going down Colorado Boulevard, having crowds of customers yelling, I love Trader Joe's! It was amazing, and just block after block for five and a half miles. Rose Parade stands for so much more than just a show. It represents us coming together to show gratitude to our crew members. It just represents tradition, inclusivity, and being a neighborhood store. In 2017, we had a float called All Aboard, which is a time machine that represented how we opened our very first store here in Pasadena in 1967. The floats that they build for Trader Joe's is used with all natural materials, fruit, flowers, all natural things that we do sell here at Trader Joe's. And we even had one float called Ride Captain Ride, which was basically a huge ship that represented how we travel the world searching for the amazing products that we have in our stores. The number of hours of manpower that go into designing and building and decorating these floats, to actually see it in person, petals and flowers hand crafted onto these floats, it's just mind blowing. Horses of all sizes and breeds have helped usher in the new year by marching through the streets of Pasadena with majesty, style, and grace. This iconic, irreplaceable Rose Parade tradition started 135 years ago by parade originators the Valley Hunt Club, and today the equestrian presentation is grander than ever.
parade favorites Carson Kressley and Michelle McFarlane ride the American saddlebreds of Scripps Miramar Ranch. The horses show off their infamous silver saddles, but it's their high-stepping precision that earned them the title of Peacocks of the Parade. Along with magnificent floats and outstanding marching bands, nearly 250 horses travel far and wide to perform in the Rose Parade each year. The Hawaii Pa'u Riders tradition dates back to a time when Hawaiian kings and queens would ride on horseback in beautiful gowns to royal balls. And how could we forget Ondar, the master Mongolian throat singer who traveled over 6,000 miles to Pasadena from Tuva, a tiny region outside of Siberia. Many all-female teams have participated over the years, such as the Painted Ladies and Blue Shadows Mounted Drill Team. Many equestrian units have been in the parade, but when it comes to originality, it's hard to forget Wild West Willie. Doug Rogers rode his 2,800-pound bull for the entire parade route in 2011. Happy New Year, guys! The new Buffalo Soldiers were organized as a historical reenactment group, and our mission is to teach the class so the future can learn about what occurred. So when I donned the uniform, I stepped away from being AJ citizen to being the Buffalo Soldier. This is Black Pearl. Smile, Black Pearl. Oh, and this is beautiful Blue Moon. The Rose Parade is something that everyone looks forward to every year. We really feel that that is what we do at Mini Therapy Horses every day on our mission is to bring hope and comfort and joy to the people we visit. It doesn't matter how old you are, what nationality, everybody goes bananas over the mini therapy horses. The new nail goes in. Hi, I'm Ada Gates Patton, and I became the first woman in the United States and Canada licensed to shoe thoroughbred racehorses. I've had the honor of being the horseshoe inspector for the Rose Parade for over 30 years. They felt that they needed a horseshoe inspector for the safety and welfare of the horse and rider to help in that regard. And so they asked me to join the parade. We have upwards of 250 horses in the parade. Horses have to travel six miles down Colorado Boulevard and shoes on pavement are very slippery. Safety and the well-being of the horse and rider is a priority for the Rose Parade. The Hermanos Bañuelos Charro team is, a, is an equestrian unit formed in 1995. The mission of those Hermanos Bañuelos is to show the children respect, to show them the culture and heritage and, and our history of the charreria. We respect our horses, we respect our, our, our friends. The group is made out of friends and family, and that's the foundation of those Hermanos Bañuelos. The celebration continues with an all-star lineup of grand marshals, the coronation of a queen, and the true heroes of the parade that you won't want to miss. All that and more next. From U.S. presidents to astronauts, John Herschel Glenn, and his wife, Annie Glenn. Trailblazers. Captain Chesley Sullenberger. Gabby Giffords. Hollywood royalty. <laughs> Olympic gold and more. The Rose Parade's prestigious lineup of Grand Marshals embody the theme of this Grand Parade each year. It's amazing just following in the footsteps of past Grand Marshals like um, Bob Hope and Frank Sinatra and the 12 Apollo astronauts. To be a member of the long list of tremendous people that have been Grand Marshals in the past is just uh, very thrilling to me. The Grand Marshals role has evolved over the course of time. Originally, the Grand Marshals role was offered to the president. We had one president early on who served over a 26 year period as a Grand Marshal. That's all changed now. So a Grand Marshal of today's Rose Parade is more of a, a ceremonial role. 
They ride in the parade. They participate in certain events. They view the floats. Uh, they do the coin toss at the Rose Bowl game. Mr. Scully. Thank you, sir. Will you do the honor for I us, please? I sure will. And they officiate over the parade. Good morning, Pasadena! An absolute honor and thrill to be the 2018 Grand Marshal for the Rose Parade. I feel blessed that I've been able to take this success that I've had in the movie and television business and to do something positive with it, to make a difference in the lives of our veterans, our active duty service members, our Gold Star families. I loved Kermit the Frog because I thought it was really cool to see Kermit going down the street waving at the crowd. I loved our sports Grand Marshals like Hank Aaron or Chi Chi Rodriguez that was here for the millennium. I loved Shirley Temple Black because I watched her grow up as a child and ride in the parade and she was here several times. Bob Hope was just funny as all get out when he did this. It's been a really a, a great group of Grand Marshals over the 135 years of the parade. And a shining moment obviously is going to be on January 1st when we all have a chance to share this tremendous parade and that incredible game. When you think of the Tournament of Roses Royal Court, you think beauty, poise, pageantry, and tradition. But with today's Royal Court, there's so much more than what meets the eye. The Royal Court is made up of intelligent, strong women who go on to be community leaders, scientists, doctors, incredibly talented women who do so much more than just wave. Although the first parade was held in 1890, the first royal court wasn't established until 1905, when Hallie Woods was named the first Rose Parade Queen. The on-again, off-again royal court tradition didn't become a permanent fixture in the parade until 1930. Today, more than 100 Rose Parade Queens have joined this awesome Pasadena legacy. I think one of the most interesting things about the royal court is how diverse and inclusive it now has become while maintaining its rich history and tradition. This year, hundreds of young women between the ages of 17 to 21 applied for the seven coveted royal court seats. It all starts with the tryouts. You come to the house and you see this snaking long line of girls. It is essentially a series of month-long interviews. Once you're in the top 25, they announce the royal court. Camille Kennedy. Once you're selected as the final seven, that's when the hard work starts. They go through intensive media training, etiquette training, and it all leads up to the coronation. Bella Ballard. <laughs> Stepping into that role is a really unique rite of passage. Once the Rose Parade Queen is announced, not a minute is wasted. You attend over 150 functions. Develop public speaking skills. Do lots of volunteer work. And serve as ambassadors to the Tournament of Roses, the Pasadena community, and the greater LA area. All within four months. In addition to the work we do serving the community, every girl on the Royal Court is the recipient of a very generous educational scholarship. I'm so fortunate to put it towards my studies in Japan. With more than 135 years of tradition, the Royal Court legacy continues to prepare these determined young women to be the future leaders of tomorrow. We're the oldest, longest running student-based organization. We've been at every Rose Parade since 1930. And this will be our 95th consecutive parade. My name is Kyle Luck. I'm the director of bands here at Pasadena City College. I direct the Lancer Marching Band, which is our college band, and I also direct the Tournament of Roses Honor Band. So this year's Honor Band is 225 students. That includes 10 members in our Herald Trumpet Unit, which is a very elite uh, unit that will be preceding the Rose Court in the Rose Parade and then 215 in the band. We had almost 500 students apply and audition this year. Of those students, we have uh, 127 of them are high school students and 98 are current college band students. It's really a big honor being able to be representing your high school. I think that there's a lot more pressure being a returner, even though you do have increased chances than everyone else. For me, it's a bigger deal trying to get in again. Oh, I was 
was so excited. I just remember being able to, like, my smile being so big. For us, being returnees, there's a lot of, like, pressure. There, you don't have a guaranteed spot, and you have to work just as hard as anyone else does to have that spot. One of the challenges we have is taking a group of students that have never played together in less than two months, having them ready for the world's biggest parade. Today is our third rehearsal. The big focus is learning the music and also choreography for the routines. This is part of our behind the scenes of what it takes to get the band ready. So we're doing uniform fittings. You'll see our pageantry, which are our tall flags and banners in the rehearsal process of learning routines. Our drum line will be together. And then our wind musicians will also be working together as a band. We will have clocked 108 hours of rehearsal by the time we're done and probably marched a total of 25 miles by the time we finish the Rose Parade. And it's equivalent to the marching band marathon because it's a five and a half mile parade. Once you turn on the TV corner, you just see the bright lights, you see like confetti falling down, you see a bunch of reporters, people just cheering you on, and it's a surreal moment. And the throngs of spectators cheering us on is one of the great thrills of being in the parade. And that continues all the way to the very end. It's a great privilege to be in really the biggest and most famous parade in the world. Greetings from Pasadena. Happy New Year! We're White, white suiters. suiters! I'm honored to be a White Suitor. I'm honored to be a White Suitor because we make the parade happen. The origin of the White Suit? As more and more attendees started attending the parade, it became a necessity to go ahead and distinguish themselves, so they decided to put them in Palm Beach white suits. The greatest thing about being a volunteer is all the happy people we see on New Year's Day. Everyone sees the Rose Parade on January 1st. What they don't see is the over 80,000 volunteer hours it takes throughout the year. Over, you know, 935 volunteers. Making sure that the community of Pasadena is taken care of by the hometown Tournament of Roses and it all comes together, it's like magical. The lifeblood of what makes this happen is that volunteer body. We make it happen. I had the pleasure and honor of marching in the 1972 parade. McDonald's All-American High School Band. Well, fast forward 40 years later and I finally moved out here, and the first thing I did was come to the tournament house and say, how do I volunteer and become a member? One of the great things about being a volunteer is that I get to do it with my spouse. In fact, we even got married here. Joining the association has become a family tradition. This is my younger brother. Okay, he's my son. <laughs> this is my dad, Mike. I love him. That's why I want to be a member, so we can uh, spend more time together. My grandfather was president of the organization in 1955, and my dad was president in 1974. So I'm a third generation. I found out that I was pregnant with my second child. The due date was just one month before the parade. I ended up being able to bring her with me, so she got to go out and take in the floats for the first time at just six weeks old. When we decided to get married, we, we wanted to make it special, so we decided to have our ceremony at Tournament House. But we knew that there were restrictions for that to happen, so we knew we had to kind of sneak onto the grounds. The judge who married us uh, was a tournament member as well as both of our witnesses. I've always said that passion is the difference between good and great. And this is a wonderful example of a great organization because of the passion each member has. Up next, a tour of the legendary Wrigley Mansion, a tribute to the granddaddy of them all and more when the Rose Parade's New Year's celebration presented by Honda continues. And now it's time for another Did You Know Moment Tournament House Edition. Did you know this fabulous mansion was once the home of the Wrigley family? That's right, the same Wrigley family that brought you chewing gum in Chicago's Wrigley Field first purchased the 19,000 square foot home in 1914 for a then staggering sum of $170,000. 
And speaking of the Wrigleys, did you know the extravagant couple had this beautiful pipe organ installed to entertain overnight Rose Parade guests? Its 1,500 pipes were hidden under the stairs and inside the walls. Oh, and fun fact, neither Wrigley could play a note. And finally, did you know this house was donated by the Wrigley family to the city of Pasadena on the one condition that the house became the permanent home of the Tournament of Roses? Today, the house features theme rooms used by parade officials and participants alike, including the President's Room, the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame Room, and of course, the Queen's Room, where they say the spirit of the Rose Parade lives 365 days a year. Oh, man. Now that's a dedicated trio. See you next time for more Did You Know? In college football, there's nothing quite like the Rose Bowl game. I think it's definitely the granddaddy of them all. I think when you look at the legendary Keith Jackson who called those games. 28 yards upfield, 37 downfield, 65 yard drive. The setting in which the Rose Bowl takes place in Pasadena with the mountains and the sunset. A beautiful day. The green grass. There's really not a setting like it in college football. Combine that with the history, you know, the tradition, the teams that have played in that, the great players, the great finishes. It makes it, in my opinion, the best bowl game there is. And I was so fortunate to play in two of them. I think my most vivid memory of the Rose Bowls uh, probably goes back to the 1980. Rose Bowl. Ohio State was undefeated. It was the 1979 season. If they beat USC, they would have gone on to secure a national championship. And USC beat them that day. Third down, two. White to the goal line. And I remember being 11 years old, sitting on the stairs after the game, crying and remembering uh, that game just always stands out to me. And be able to be in that broadcast booth and look out over the stadium, beautiful day, and the colors from the field to the colors of the uniforms, the bright sunshine, it's something that I always look forward to. The appreciation of what it stands for, if anything, it just continues to get stronger. It's the greatest day and the greatest event in all of sports. I have a, a, such a unique situation with the, the Rose Bowl. To have coached in three Rose Bowls, is very unique. I'd have to say I was the coach that lost one too against Alabama. When um, I was really little, the Rose Bowl was such a huge part of our family and it stayed that way. And I never really knew all the connections and the stories. So we go out to play and, and my wife and I see my mother at midfield crying like a baby. We said, mom, what's wrong? Are you okay? And she said, yeah, when I was 14 years old, my, my, my dad, your granddad brought me out here and I laid in the middle of the field and, and at 14 years old, it was one of the coolest things. And I never heard that story. The 04 Rose Bowl against Michigan, it was kind of like a dream come true. The touchdown pass I caught is something that, you know, I always remember. During the time, I was just like catching a touchdown, trying to get in, not get caught, and not drop the pass. The flyover before the game, the national anthem, all of those things, they're always important. But when you're at the Rose Bowl, it feels different. The game, I think, all of us over the last maybe 10 to 15 years, think back to, has to be the Matt Leinart, Reggie Bush, USC team against uh, the Texas Longhorns led by Vince Young. We were 25 and two with that team over the last two years, and we were the underdog. So that, that tells you how good the other team was. I think we were riding a 33 game win streak. We had won two national championships in a row. People were trying to knock us off. Uh, right before the, the last play, we asked him what play you want to run. It was a fourth and five. He told us to play and it was a pass play. And I said, your legs are your best asset. Don't forget it. So if you don't like what you see, you can pick up five yards with your feet. I'm too old for this. <laughs> Fourth and five, the national championship on the line right here. He's going for the corner. He's got it. Vince Young scores. To be inducted into the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame, you're really a part of history. When I look at the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame, it's one of the joys of my life. I think if you're a player and you're lucky enough or a coach lucky enough to play in that game, you should consider yourself very, very fortunate. It's the highlight of the season. Calling those games is the highlight of my career. And now, some of the greatest moments in Rose Bowl history. Over 
Jones got it. Stiff arm again. Quarterback in the clear. Inside the 10. A hat trick of touchdown for Justin Herbert. Stanford started his drive on their 22 yard line. A desperation last gas drive, racing against the clock. This will be a 31 yard field goal attempt for Steve Murray holding. Let's see what happens. Watch it. It is up. It is. It is good. Stanford leads 13 to 12 with 12 seconds to go. Look at him up. There's Smith. He may never get up. Is offset from the end. Jermaine going to throw it wide open. Got him, but guys leading. 19 seconds to go. And the freshman, David Boston, with his second touchdown pass of the game. Mangum out there away from the rest of the huddle. It will be a 37 yard drive from the left hash marks. On the last time a Rose Bowl game ended with a field goal. It was 1972 when Stanford beat Michigan 13 to 12 on a 31 yard field goal by Rod Garcia. From the left hash mark, a 37 yard field goal, flash bulbs popping everywhere. 37-35, Michigan has the lead, two seconds to go. Snap down, kick up, it is long enough, it is good! Good! Texas wins an amazing Rose Bowl, 38 to 37. Matt Bormeister, Junior been very accurate 15 of 20 coming into this game, but he has missed a couple of long ones. Is it overtime? No, it is Matt Bormeister winning for the Trojans in a Rose Bowl classic right here. It's good. USC wins it. Touchdown earlier on a direct snap. Now it's Michelle's turn running all the way. Gets to the edge. Sonny Michelle will send the dogs home to the championship game. Sonny wants to throw for it. He downfield. Sonny drops it in. Touchdown. Marvin Harrison Jr. On a fourth and short, they find the end zone. What a gamble and what a throw. Look at Covey <laughs> weaving his way. Look out, Britton Covey accelerates. Can they run him down? No, they can't. Britton Covey, yet another ice call as a returner. Stroud watching the end zone. Jump ball. Touchdown, Smith and Jigba. Are you kidding me? There is no day, in my, in my experience, better than Pasadena, January 1st, parade, game, see you later. We wanted to take this opportunity to wish you a very happy new year. Happy new year from sunny Southern California. Happy new year, America. I hope your new year is filled with love and laughter. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Wishing everyone around the country and around the world a happy, healthy New Year. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. I want to wish all of you a very happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Wishing you a happy New Year. Feliz Año Nuevo. Happy New Year! Wishing you all a very happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year.